When we're building WPF applications, we have to use bindings a lot of the time in our XAML, and that means that we're using value converters a lot of the time as well. But what happens when you need to deviate from all of the built-in value converters and do something a little bit more custom? Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to look at making our own iValue converter, and that way we're able to change from some type that's on our data context into something that we want to have on a dependency property for our controls. In the previous video that I made in this series, which you can find up here, I was walking through how we could use the built-in value converters to do some of that binding for us, but in this video, we're going to make our very own. So if that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and make our own iValue converter. On my screen is a very simple WPF application. I have a main window and then it has a grid with a label on it. And that label is currently binding to fancy text. And fancy text is a property that we have on the main window view model, which I'm setting to this data context here on line 18. Fancy text is a string. As you can see, it says fancy right here with two exclamation marks, right? So if we have fancy text, which is a string, if I go back to the XAML here, content is also something that can take in a string. That way this binding just works directly. We don't have to do any type of conversion, but if we wanted to, if we wanted to go take a number instead, right? So if I wanted to go take cool level instead of fancy text, and I wanted to map that. So basically if I put cool number here. If I wanted to have this work and even change some of the text, so if I go back into here, if I wanted it to be more than just this, maybe I want the label to say something like the cool level is followed by the number, maybe do some rounding on those digits, whatever we want, right? We want to go from a double or a floating point number to some string. How would we do that? We're dealing with a number here and back over here, we want to make sure that we have a string to go into our content. What can we do? There is no built-in value converter for this type of thing, so we have to go make our own. I've set up Nick's Cool Converter, which we're going to jump over to right now, and you can see that Nick's Cool Converter is an iValue converter, so that's going to be the first requirement that we need to do. And value converters have two methods on them. Because we're only going to be doing a one-way binding, we're not going to focus on convert back. So you can ignore this one for now, but if you're curious about how convert back works, it's literally just the opposite of what we're about to go implement. If we go look at convert, let's go walk through the parameters first so we can understand what's going on. We're going to have the value that's passed in. You'll notice that the value passed in is of type object, but also convert returns an object. That's because this interface, iValueConverter, lets us map between whatever types we want. But it does mean that we need to go make either assumptions or explicitly check the types that are coming in. So in this case, I know Nick's cool converter is only going to get used with something that I can cast to a double. So line 15 here. If we had other types that we needed to support, so to say not just double, maybe we needed longs or we wanted to maybe only make this work with shorts or bytes, right? If you needed to have specific checks or support multiple types, you have to do type checking within here. Ours is going to be very straightforward, which is why I'm not checking anything. I'm just directly casting. So this could totally blow up on us if someone used this value converter and we didn't have a double passed in. Okay. The next part is the target type. So that's where we, what we want to map to, right? So your return type should be something that can be assigned to this type. So with the value and the target type, we know how we need to go map something, but I don't even need to check the target type in this case for a simple example, because I know that what I want to be able to do is go from doubles to strings. But like I said, if you're building something more robust, you probably want to put more checks in place. And that way you can protect the users. If they're using this incorrectly, you can maybe even throw exceptions for them that are easy to understand understand or maybe have some default behavior when it's not doing what it's intended to do. Up to you, but you probably want to have slightly better checking than no checking at all. So here we're going from an object to a double with this simple cast. And then I have this formatting here, but I'm going to change this up because I wanted to make it look a little bit more interesting. Instead of just doing uh, the F3 for the formatting, what I want to do is use string interpolation. And I wanted to say the cool level is, and then I want to have that value in here. And Copilot, are you going to do it for me? No? Okay. I'm going to see if we can do a two digits of, uh, of rounding. And I think it's either that or I have to do 
I think this is the syntax I actually need for the string format. I can never remember, but we're going to find out very soon if this is what we need. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object-oriented programming and some async programming, or you're just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together, you can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks and back to the video. This value converter is going from what should be a double passed in and when we go to return this, it's going to be a formatted string that has literally the cool level is followed by that rounded version of that number. If we go back to the main window, how do we use this, right? Like we've made it, but it just exists. It's not being assigned or used anywhere. So the way that you do that, like we saw in the previous video on this, I need to be able to add a converter. So I type converter and the syntax we have to use here is static because we're going to be using a static resource. So now we need the static resource, but we don't have one yet. I have to go back up here. So what we have to do is set up the window resources, and this is where we're going to include the value converter that we want to work with. So Copilot is here to help me. It's not quite right, but it's going to give us the syntax that we need to use. So you can see that it says local and then custom converter. So custom converter isn't what we called it. It's called Nix cool converter, right? And then I need to give it a key. So I'm just going to call it Nix cool converter as well. So we look it up by the key. So I'm going to put that down here as well. So the static resource that we want is called Nix cool converter. But the issue is that this thing is not in this local namespace. So Copilot was close, but not quite. So if I go to use the refactoring menu, we should be able to add in this missing namespace. So this tooltip is completely ridiculous. It's taking up my whole screen. But if I preview the changes, <laughs> I go apply them. You can see it's going to add this namespace in here. Right, so converters is what it's aliasing, and then it's going to have wpfplayground.converters. And just to show you, the namespace we're using is wpfplayground.converters. So going back to the XAML, what do we have now? Well, we have converters, then we have Nix cool converter, and it's saying it's not found, but I think if we rebuild it, it should find it. There we go. I just had to rebuild it. Sometimes the code generation is a little bit stale. So now it can see that Nix cool converter exists and to prove it, I like pressing F12 on these things to see if it will jump to the definition and it does. So that's good news. So we have Nix cool converter up here in the resources and then we have the usage of it down here. We should be able to, at this point, go run this thing. We have binding set to be cool number and our converter set up. I'm just gonna double check that I don't have any breakpoints on this thing. I do. I'm going to remove it just so we can see it working. And if I double check too, technically I misspoke and I was just formatting this. So we could just put this into here just to make it easy. But I think that it would still work with object. I'm not sure if it would need to be cast to double first, but we want to use that anyway. So let's go ahead and run this and see it work. Uh oh, looks like we have a bit of an issue here. So I think we set up everything correctly. We have the binding in place and we have the converter. But just to show you, if I put a breakpoint here and we go run it, we should see that we're hitting this convert method. And that's not happening. And to be honest with you, this wasn't planned, but I think it's a good opportunity to show you how to debug this kind of stuff. So the converter is set up. We're referencing the right converter, but you can see that our convert method is never being called. So that's not good. So that means that our binding is broken or else this converter would go run because it needs to go run on the binding. So what's going on here? I found out that it's not cool number. My crappy naming is catching up to me. It's not called cool number. It's actually called cool level. So with cool level here now, if I go run this, I'm going to take out the breakpoint because I want to show you how cool it is when it just works. So if I go press play, we get this nice formatted string, right? It says the cool level is 42.13. And that means this format string works properly. And we have that coming out of our value converter. And if you wanted to step through again, you could go put this breakpoint here and we could see that the stuff coming in here, right? If I hover over value, it is a double. The target type is just going back to object. 
it's not really helpful for us right here. The parameter is null and the culture info is going to be the current thread culture. So not a whole lot of helpful information on the convert method call, except the value coming in in this particular case. So nothing too exciting, but I wanted to show you how you can step through that to check the parameters. And that is going to be the output from our cool new value converter. But there is a bit of a drawback when we start working with value converters. And this is a common theme that I found from working with WPF for almost a decade. I don't work with WPF anymore, but when I spent a lot of time working in it, I was always faced with challenges that made me feel like I was fighting against the framework. In this particular case, we have a problem if our converters need some sort of dependencies passed into them. If you want to build value converters and see how you can work with dependencies, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.